Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another My 600 Pound Life video from somebody who used to be 600 pounds. And we got JT, the Justin Timberlake of My 600 Pound Life, apparently. And we're going to see what he's doing in Oklahoma. And I guarantee it's going to be pretty good. I can't believe we started out with dominoes on these nuts. That's insane. Every day of my life is pretty much the same. I wake up and eat. And then I try to keep eating for as long as I can. Because it's what I live for now. And it's all I want to do. And I can't start my day until I've had something. So when my girlfriend Jessica wakes up, she usually gets up before me and heads out, but she never leaves me without leaving something I like by the bed. And some of you people say you can't get in a damn relationship. Look at this guy, the domino demon himself. Oh, got a girlfriend, and he's sitting here starting out his morning with what, two pizzas? Damn, buddy. Nothing else I can do can compete with how good it feels to be eating. Nothing? Because food comforts me better than people can, and it's the only thing that brings me back to at peace or at center. Bro, <laughs> it looks like his pants got in a fight with a Chipotle chupacabra or something. That's sh You need a new pair of pants, guy. So why would I even want that to end? Even when it feels like it's too much for my body to hold. When I'm done eating, sometimes I feel miserable just because I'm so full that I can't move. But it doesn't matter how full I feel. A few minutes pass, I'm hungry again and I'm ready for my next meal. But A few minutes after you just crushed two pizzas, it looks like breadsticks. I think he's got the two topping, two medium breadsticks. I used to get that deal all the time, but it lasts me two days. And I was 600 pounds, so I don't know what the hell this guy is. And I don't think he could move anyway with that thing in the way. Some days I also have to get up and try to clean myself. I try to shower at least once a week. But getting out of bed is something I dread. And it's getting to the point where it's almost too hard to do it. Because I sink in so deep, it's like trying to get out of cotton candy or pudding. You did not have to compare sinking into the mattress to food also. Once a week's kind of slacking. You got to get at least twice a week. Come on, buddy. We need to get out here and get ourselves clean a little bit. But as hard as it is, getting up out of bed is the easy part. Because not only do I have all the weight of my body pulling down on me, I also have severe lymphedema on my left leg. I can't walk properly because my lymphedema pushes against both of my legs. It hurts constantly. And I can only... Damn, those hips don't lie either. He's very weirdly proportioned. Kind of like a traffic cone. Stand for maybe 15 minutes at a time. My size and my lymphedema make it hard to fit in most places anymore. I'm going to need a stopwatch also. I don't think he could get 15. My back was on fire after like 10. And I know he's got to be hurting. I can barely get in the bathroom and sit on the toilet. And if I get any bigger, I won't be able to. And I'm scared of what I'm going to do when it gets to that point. I can't take a shower in a normal tub. I have to have a stand-in shower because it would be just impossible for me to lift my left leg over the rim of the tub. But because I have to... I almost got stuck in a tub a few times, so I know his ass ain't getting in no tub. Stand. I can't stay in the shower for too long. It just hurts too much. And to make it even worse, I can't be in water for too long because it's bad for my lymphedema. The hot water makes the swelling worse, and then it starts... Is this guy a demon? Like the holy water is going to burn him? What's going on in his life? It starts to burn. It's in there scrub the most stinky parts and then out. I can wash everything on my body from about my waist up. Uh, when it gets to my leg and down below my leg, it's almost impossible. So I do as much as I can, 
and then I get out before it gets too bad. But I'm very limited at this point. I'm beyond scared to get to a point where I can't take a shower on myself. I can't. I'm surprised he can even do it at this point. Also, he's got the pointiest boobs I've ever seen on a man. Those chesticles are just like straight bazooka boobs. It, it terrifies me to get to that far. But I know I'm really close to that point now because of how much of a struggle it is to do anything. And by the time I'm done with my shower, I'm already wiped. And I have to sit and catch my breath before I try to put my clothes back on. But at my size, I don't have many outfit options. I have one pair of pants that fit me still because of how big my leg is, and just a couple of shirts that fit. But I guess, man, it's hard to find clothes that fit, but we're gonna have to get a skirt or something to hide that thing. That ball boulder's gonna friggin' hurt. They're getting really worn down at this point. And if I get any bigger, they'll either get to be too small or just completely fall apart. Then I think my only option to cover myself would be a blanket, which will be a whole different level of embarrassment for me that I'm scared of. But even with all I'm afraid of happening soon, because of how big I'm getting, I still can't stop doing what's causing it. I think we might need to transition to a blanket at this point. Those clothes are hanging on like living on a prayer. And once I'm dressed, if Jessica isn't back yet to make me something, then I'll try to do it myself. Because the pain in my body from being up is nothing compared to the pain of not eating. We just had like effing three pizzas. Second breakfast already? I can't believe some of them can put this much down. He's got to have some kind of weird, what is it? PW, I forget what it's called. When I want. And the upside of when I get my own food is that I can make as much as I want. And I always want a lot. My portion sizes are very large. No kidding. Yeah, large serving sizes of things. And I'll just make the whole thing. You know, the whole can of biscuits and all the saucers patties. I'll eat it all. And I won't stop until it's all gone. This guy, it, he might be the one that eats the most on the show I've seen thus far. You know Jessica has to go shop just about every other day to keep food in the house. Because my appetite keeps growing and I constantly need a supply of food. So I can keep eating and keep that feeling I need going. And We're going double mattresses? No wonder you sink in that damn thing. But I guess a box spring would bust out under him. And that dog's just praying that he gets one of those sausages, and I don't think he's going to. Nothing in my life can compete with how food makes me feel. Not anything. Damn, shots Eating at you, girlfriend. Eating is better than sex for me. And every time I take a bite, it's like I'm transported to this other world where there's no pain. I'm gonna have to get me some of these damn sausage patties if they're gonna take me to Naughty Narnia or something. How good are these damn sausages? There's no sadness, there's no judgment. There's only peace and joy. And all that comes with food. So I can't even imagine my life without it. Because it is my life. It's what I'm living for and why I get up. If I'm awake, I'm either eating or waiting to eat. And if I'm asleep, I'm dreaming of eating. So it's all I think about and want. If you're his girlfriend and you're laying in bed next to him at night and you just hear him like... <sighs> Egg McMuffin, what are you thinking? I don't even want to be awake a lot of times if I can't eat. So if I've uh. eaten just about everything in the house and Jessica's not back yet with more food, I just go to sleep and wait for her to get back with what I need. That's such a cute dog. I'm sorry, puppers. You're going to have to starve. I don't think he even thought about feeding you. Hey. I'm here. Can you come out and help me? Yeah, I'll be out there in just a second. I hate when Jessica asks me to carry the groceries in because Jessica knows I'll do anything for food. Yeah, that huzzy. She's bringing you the lady you're cheating on her with that gets you feeling so damn good. And now... You, oh my god, this dude is nuts. Just being around it, I already can't wait to eat it. Especially the candy. I worry about JT a lot. About his condition and weight and everything. 
and how much he eats. Because since I've met JT, he has gained weight. I think when we first started dating, he could do more. Now I would say pretty much everything JT does, I see him struggle with. I would what exactly could he do before Jessica? Let us know, inquiring minds want to know. So there's more I can do to help him. But if I express those worries to JT, he gets very upset, especially when I try to influence JT's eating habits in any way. So I end up bringing home. I think we might have to influence yours a little bit too, but he also has like a hole right where his butthole is. So you know he's just having blowouts left and right. The fast food and getting what he wants from the store because they don't want JT to be mad at me. So I just do whatever he wants. F anything with sugar is my big weakness, especially anything with peanut butter in it. Whether it be mixed with chocolate, a cookie, cake, ice cream, it's my... I know everyone in any other part of the world is like, why are Americans so obsessed with chocolate and peanut butter? It's effing delicious. That's why. Guilty pleasure. So eating peanut butter cups and anything peanut butter candies, I love it. I feel happy when I eat peanut butter. Reminds me when I was a kid, having good times. So I can't get enough of them. I just want to feel the way they make me feel forever. Because some of my happiest times of my life were when I was young, before I really don't want to hear him talk about peanut butter like that when he's home with just the dog alone all day because it's like weird things might be going on. Things started to get hard. I'd go to school from 7 until 3. I have to go to work from about 3 p.m. to about 3 a.m. and then have to be back up at 7 a.m. for school. And I made Damn, so maybe him taking on the, all those responsibilities really young messed with him. Because kids deserve to be kids. His parents definitely did him dirty. It's it's so sad. We did what we needed, but the stress of it all was hard. To do school and work like that, and I started to get really depressed. And that just made me want to eat more. And by the time I was 18 and graduated high school, I'd crossed well over into the 500s. Damn, he's really burning up that scale. 500 right out of high school? You're cooking with grease, my man. And then when I was 19, I started working at a pizza place. And I love pizza, but the deal was the same there, where I could eat for free. And by the end of the day, I had eaten four or five pizzas on my own and a bunch of... In a day? I mean, you guys find somebody that doesn't like pizza. It's delicious. But at least, I don't know, I tried cauliflower pizza the other day. It was pretty good. Food started to become this all-consuming passion of mine. I always wanted to be eating. But I was also that person that got a sense of joy out of it because feeding other people became almost like a, a euphoric thing for me. And How much are we really sharing if we're eating four or five pizzas a day? They might get a slice or two. But that's so much damn pizza in one day. I'm guessing I was around 700 pounds then. Since I couldn't take care of my family anymore, the one thing I didn't want to do is become more of a financial burden to them. So I started living on my own, doing nothing. How do you live on your own when you're 700 pounds? That would be like next to impossible. And it looks like a lot of people in his family have a weight issue here. Really, but eating all day alone. But the loneliness didn't help my depression. I got a dog named Bella to try to help. But nothing does for me what food does. So my eating has never slowed down. To where now, I don't know how much I weigh. All I know is... It's gotten to be too hard to do most everything. Poor Bella. You know that dog's not getting regular walks or anything like that. And we're on, like, what, our fourth meal or fifth meal today already? And he's eating so much. If it wasn't for Jessica in my life, I don't know what I'd do or how I'd survive. We met originally on a dating app. And when I came to JT's house to meet him for the first time, I just felt comfortable, so... I didn't really notice JT's weight or his size because what it, there's got there's like BBW Cupid, BBW Backbusters. I don't know. There's something like that out there. I think his personality covers it up pretty well. I always dreamed of and wanted a family of my own. When Jessica came into my life, it gave me hope. But the problem is, I'm still 32 and weigh so much I can hardly move. But food is such an important part of my life. 
How do I give up what makes me feel happy and safe? And like I did when I was a kid. Food is my everything. This guy just seems like he's given up all hope. Food is the only thing that's going to make him happy. His family kind of gave him a raw deal off the start. He took on too much responsibility, and now I feel bad for him. But you're going to have to do something for yourself. Nobody else can save you. So I don't know how to live without it. Even though I know it's the same thing that's killing me now. And it's taking my future and life from me. I love JT, so my dream is to have a family with him. But I'm worried that if he doesn't lose weight, I'm not going to have that. I don't think JT's that interested in that with you. I think he'd rather stick his thing in a bag of Reese cups from the way he was talking earlier. Maybe an Egg McMuffin. I don't know. He, he might be in something like that. The doctors gave me until I was 30. And I'm 32 now, so my time is running out. So I don't have a lot longer. Because at any moment, my heart can just give out. And that does scare me. But losing food scares me more. And that's... That's... To think that way, like, I'd rather lose my life than lose my food just shows how strong his addiction to food is. The problem. It was really good, though. Thanks. I appreciate it. I want to live, but I don't see how I can without food. So I know I need help. Hey, babe, is there any ice cream in there? I think so. He's so full, he can't stand it. But now he's going for the Ben and Jerry's backup. chocolate chip cookie dough. Thanks. You're welcome. Every night when I go to bed, I wonder if tonight's the night I'm not gonna wake up because I can feel something bad coming. We're also on a queen-size mattress, so both of them in there, that bed's gotta be taken up fully. My body's never felt this way. I've never heard as bad as I do. And now I struggle to breathe a lot. So I'm just getting even worse. Because my body can't take all my weight anymore. I can't believe you even think like that. Like, I'm struggling to breathe. There's probably a piece of bacon stuck in your damn throat because you won't slow down for nothing. It's just too much. Are you done? Yeah, can you throw this away for me? Yeah, I will. I appreciate it. <clears throat> so whatever time I have left, it's not a lot. We're playing on borrowed time, so if you want to make a change here, it's going to have to happen urgently because he's well over 700 at this point. So he might be in one of the worst shapes, like Samantha, I think, was worse. She was like 940 or something. Bella, move over. Move over, Bella. I don't think I have another year in me. I just heard him fart, man. Either that or the dog just got crushed. So I either have to find a solution to help me finally change. Or I know there's no way I'm going to be alive for much longer. It's so sad, man. Look at how miserable this guy is. But he just doesn't see any way out of the predicament he's in. And what the hell are the cinder blocks for? Is that your table? I'm glad I can fit, but it's still tight, and I'm really uncomfortable. Well, let me spread it out. Wanna hold the pillows? Yeah. That's what she said. Yeah, I think I'm ready. Even though I can fit, I'm worried if I hit my breaking point, it'll be somewhere on the road. And that's possibly scary, because it's a life and death situation for me. There's no way he can make it all the way to friggin' Houston like that. He's gonna be so uncomfortable, so miserable the whole ride. So this is a big risk, and I have a lot of fear right now. We've only been on the road about two hours, but I can't go much further. My whole body is hurting too much, and my legs have gone numb now. So I need to stop. We are not stopping at a food exit. Are you kidding me? He eats literally every two hours and more than some people eat in an entire day on this show. Hey, babe, we need to stop. 
Yeah. You want to get some fast food? Yeah. Some meat? Yeah. Fuck we'll me. Okay. I'm hoping that I'll be able to go longer tomorrow once I get some rest. But so far, we've only gotten two hours in an eight hour drive. Dang it, two? Damn, we didn't make it very far at all, but we're we'll always go tomorrow like a little longer, huh, boys? Of the beef and cheddars. Uh, so that's not nearly as far as I was hoping. And I'm a little disappointed in myself for that. Thanks. 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 At least it's one bag this time. He's pacing himself somewhat, because. I can't believe how much Domino's he ate just after waking up. I only have two days until my appointment with doctor now. So whatever it takes, I have to go longer for tomorrow. But this was a lot harder than I expected, and I'm just at my limit. And I'm hoping that if I get some solid rest and eat, that I'll be ready again tomorrow. I don't know why you think, like, eating is the answer to everything. But it's what's going to make this much worse, make your depression worse. It's going to pull you down. And you just need to, like, find some fight and some will in you, my man. Like, you're just so happy to be how you are. We're going to have to figure out somehow to block this hole right here. We're going to use this blanket. Crap, I hope I make it over that. Ooh. Ooh. Am I confused or are we on flat ground right here? Because how you can't make it flat across the floor and you want to eat more? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this. I find it so bad that the cameraman just stands there and never helps. Jessica could get behind there giving him the old heave ho or something, but nobody's trying to help him at all because they know it makes good television. We did it. Almost. Bro, that band is rocking so much. Damn, I don't think I ever broke a band suspension, but I probably got pretty close. This is more activity than I've had in more than six or seven years. So it's taking everything I got just to push myself to do this. And I just want to get upstairs to rest as soon as possible. Hey, give me a second. Oh. Do you know where the room is? It's on the fourth floor. Oh, shit. If you're on the third floor, you're screwed. If you're under him and he goes down, you're done for. Dunsky. Crap, do you know where the elevator is? Yeah. Don't get I wouldn't even risk the elevator with those two. That's kind of dangerous. You're going to go right down that shaft. Get all that now. I need to get to the room. Just give me something I can carry so we can go. Like the purse. Can you hurry, please? Okay. Hey, hold that better. Don't drop that, please. I'm not gonna drop it. Okay, come on. You can be fat or you can be a dickhead. You can't be fat and a dickhead because nobody's gonna wanna put up with you. She seems like she's a friggin' angel helping him out. And he's just like, can we hurry? Can we this? He's so, his attitude kind of sucks. Let's just go. I have to lay down now before I pass out. Like. Jessica, you're gonna have to hold on. Jessica's not exactly moving light speed or anything, but if we'd stop moonwalking to McDonald's, we could probably keep up. Hey, Jess, you're gonna have to wait for a second.
Do you think we could get like one of those dolly things? Because I think if you could put that under that thing, he could get around a lot easier. He needs wheels under it because it's almost dragging the ground. And that's not me being like nasty. It's me trying to help because that thing's probably holding him back a lot. believe he actually made it i thought for sure he wasn't making it all the way there but he's exhausted from getting out of that van and getting right to here thank god i just really hope the beds are good and that they can hold me because my legs are about to give out I don't know if this is stable for me to sit on. I'm not trying to be on the floor. I'll try to... I don't know if that thing's stable enough either. Do, do they have insurance on hotel rooms? Like, if you break the bed or something, you know, and like, will they pay for it, or do you have to pay for it? Sit on it. What is that on? Oh. I'm like, sit down slowly. There's no slowly. Oh. It's hot. That's high. Come on, dude. But I guess if you're slinging a hundred pounds around on one leg, it would be very difficult to get up in bed. Why do you keep going that way? Why don't you try to like military crawl, like bend over, like face down, cheeks up, and then kind of crawl in there? That probably would be easier, right? Okay. What? I was pulling this up. Thanks. You're welcome. That was a big risk, but I had no choice. I couldn't wait any longer. My body was going to give out. So now we need to re-energize in the Hotel California. This food is helping me calm down, but I'm really glad the bed is holding me for now. With a little less than two days to get to Houston and about six or seven hours of driving left to get there, I at least have to be able to go an hour longer tomorrow. If we're going to have any chance of making it on time, because if Dr. Now doesn't accept me into the program, and all this pain, all the stress, all the anxiety will just be all for nothing. With I'm so pulling for this guy because I don't want to see him suffer this way for this whole time. This is terrible. This guy's in such bad shape. I don't know how he's even hanging on at this point. I don't know how he hasn't died in his sleep, honestly. Me being pretty much a ticking time bomb, time isn't on my side right now. So I need to focus on getting ready physically and mentally to do what I need tomorrow. Because my whole life depends on me being able to do what I need. I feel like just watching some TV and passing out. And, you know, so we can get up early in the morning and get on the road. I was thinking we could go to the hotel gym and do some Thai bow. I don't think she really thinks you're going to do anything besides watch TV and pass out. Like, she's not going to expect you to do jumping jacks or anything. I know I'm over 600 pounds. And probably over 700, too. Duh, you were seven before the fifth domino order in the day. And you're ripping your pants. He can't even get in and out of the van. Like, those pants, literally, we just need to get him a damn loincloth at this point. I just hope my weight's not a lot higher than that. 892. Oh, shit. That's about seven kangaroos. We're getting up there, man. I know you Australians weigh each other in kangaroos. Like, I just, I can't get over that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that. I'm like eight pounds away from being 900. 
It feels like a mistake because I never even imagined that I could get this big. So I'm terrible. Well, use your imagination, uh, cause you're about there, buddy. You're you're cooking, man. You are. He's about like two or three months the way he's eating away from it. Fight right now because I know I can't go on for much longer at this weight. So I have to get the help that I need now because it's going to be too late soon. Look, the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. So this guy better start trying real soon or everybody's going to have to pitch in with a couple shovels because it's going to be hard to get six feet deep for that much. So where are you all coming from? Claremore, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. All right. Actually, I didn't even think about that. We're from Oklahoma because we're going to be dying sooner if we don't change things. That kind of makes sense. Right? I would say that's not too bad a drive. But you're almost 900 pounds with the severe lymphedema. So I'm surprised you're still even mobile at this point. And this has uh, been going on for how long? I was diagnosed with lymphedema in 2008. So you have had that for over a decade. Mm -hmm. Man, don't you really wish you had it cut off when it was smaller? Because it's my understanding you can have it cut off, right? We've seen Dr. Now do that before. It probably is a lot easier before it gets up to the size of a 10th grader. Gradually, he's getting worse, right? Yes. Okay. Well, my big concern is you're traveling with that, and at your size, this is a very difficult situation to crack. But if we lose some weight, we may be able to address that. Okay. But right now, let me see how bad this one is in your leg. Oh, uh, they right now are pretty bad. Oh, and it, like... it doesn't even look like a leg anymore. Like, it's gotten so bad that I feel terrible for the dude, because that's got to be miserable. Turn around, let me see what this side of your leg uh, So it's going to be very important for you to lose some weight, so... We can have some potential of maybe taking that off in the future, huh? Yeah. Isn't the side profile kind of funny? Because you would not think he's 900 pounds if you saw him from, like, here up, right? He doesn't look that bad from there. All right. Your BMI is 121, which is in dangerous situation. So with all this, I'm glad you're still mobile. But how was your activity? Uh. Damn, we're going to have to play the pick three. We're 121. Once you start getting mega millions fat and you get up there towards six digits, you're in friggin' trouble. Non-existent. Okay, so what do you do all day? I sit down, pretty much play video games or watch TV. Do you have a goal in your life? I do have a goal in my life. What is it? I want to see the world. I don't think we're going to be able to travel, but I thought he was going to say something even crazier than that, like synchronized swimmer in the Olympics. Like, dream big and all that. I, I love when people dream big. But this guy is very, I don't know, he could definitely travel. I'm just being a jerk right now. I've always wanted to go to Japan and live there. It'd be nice to do something like that. Says every person that's watched too damn much anime in the U.S. Well, that's not as cool, but if you're almost immobile, then how are you going to support yourself over there? Uh, I haven't really thought about it, so not sure yet. My goal right now is just to lose the weight and... Be rid of it. I don't really care what drives you to lose weight. If it's going to Japan to be in a cat girl cafe, like I'm all for it, buddy. Just get to work, man. You stop for like 20 meals on the way there. All right. First thing we need to do is start you on a 1200 calorie high protein or carb diet. You think you can do that? I can try. So who else is in your household beside you? Uh, just Jess. And you two are dating, correct? Mm hmm Oh, Jess, he's about to jump your ass, because this guy blinks and eats 1,200 calories. This is going to be a tough one. Okay. Since he's not that mobile, you're bringing him all the food he wants? Yes. And you have weight problem, and he has yeah. a weight problem. So that's a bad combination. Yeah, huh? it is. Yes. So this is going to take both of you to make the changes to be successful. Yeah. Okay? But Julius, if you... He kind of looks like this kid I grew up with, now that I think about it. When I was, like, 14, he was, like, 12, 11, something like that. We used to ask him what, like, dirty words meant, and if he got it right, we'd give him a piece of bacon, and we called it Who Wants to Be a Bacon Heir? You stick to this diet, 
you should be able to easily lose 150 pounds over the next two months. Okay. okay. And if you do that, then we'll consider you for weight loss surgery. But at your size and with your issues with your lymphedema, I'm concerned about you traveling back and forth. So you need to move down to Houston immediately if you want to do this. This poor guy's in for a rough ride, though, because that's so much weight he has to lose before he can even get the surgery to, like, safely do it. He might be in... Yeah, he's right up there with Samantha as far as, like, being in a bad spot. But Dr. Now even did her surgery when she was, like, way bigger because she had some kind of medical emergency and she needed it urgently. I was scared of being in the car for as long as I was. I had pushed my body too hard and that something really bad is happening. So Jessica called Dr. Now and he told her I need to get to the hospital now. Oh, no. All that time on the road really tore dude up that bad? It's only an eight hour, I guess eight hours at 800 is not safe at all. Because he's worried it could be from an infection with my lymphedema. And he said if it is, it could be really bad. So he wants us to go now. It ain't good, but also look, he pushed off that wall at one point because he put a hole in it. That's kind of funny. So Jess went to go make another minivan rental. And she's going to take me in that. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle being in the car when I feel this bad. I'm just really scared and I'm hoping something isn't really wrong because I feel like... No, a few things are wrong. But do you, do you think U-Haul thinks for a second when they rent something out that there's going to be a thousand pound man in the back of it? Like, I'm dying. Okay, getting in the van? Yeah, I think so. Okay. He's gonna have to be. What other options do you have? I don't think they could bring a backhoe in there to get him out. I hope I can do this. She's strong, strong. She's been on the My 600 Pound Weightlifting program. I feel really bad and I'm really scared. My lymphedema hurts a lot and it's really swollen. And we tied together our pants. I'm pretty sure you can get like 10x pants from like Destination XL or something. I know, I used to get 6x sweatpants and I'm pretty sure I saw it go all the way up to like 12x. But it might just be, it might break into his food budget a little. But I'm really hoping it's not infected. Or that my body is breaking down. <clears throat> If we get a flat tire, we are 600 pounds screwed at this point. I'm trying to do something to fix things, so I can't be out of time. Because I'm ready to change. That's good news, though. I mean, a lot of people kind of struggle off the bat. If he's ready to change and he actually means it, this could be like a feel-good story. Park at here. Please don't get smart. What do you mean? Do you want her to friggin' parachute you in there? You obviously you go to the. Well, I guess they could go to the like emergency room. They don't have to go into the parking garage, or maybe that is the emergency. Yeah, it says emergency. Get out. to get out of the van, brother. He's even being snotty with random people that are trying to help him. 
that's when you know that your attitude will block so many of your blessings in life. This guy might get what's coming to him. I'm praying that whatever is wrong with me isn't something really bad and that it's too late. But I feel like I'm dying and I'm scared it is. Did they candid camera film this guy in the emergency room? Because this is not the video quality they usually have. I want to feel bad for him, I really do, but his attitude's making me not feel bad for him. It's been a month since my first appointment with Dr. Now. I had a bit of a scare when I got back because I got really sick. And I was worried that I pushed my body to a breaking point with all- How'd they get glaze in the back of their fan? That's gotta be like donut glaze. All the traveling. But I mostly had food poisoning from something I ate on the road. But I had also irritated my lymphedema. So it was flaring up really bad and starting to get infected. So they put me on antibiotics to clear it up before it got worse. But I'm feeling- Damn, even food's turning our back on us at this point. That has to suck. I'm feeling a whole lot better now. And I'm really glad that nothing was seriously wrong. And that I still have time to try and turn things around. We'll go outside? You wanna go potty? Hmm? We we'll go play ball and potty? Come on, let's go. That dog's so excited. He hasn't heard outside in probably like a week. You wanna go potty? You wanna go potty? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I've been working to do Dr. Now's exercises and diet. For activity, I've been going out to walk Bella. And I play with her a little. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh. The first day, I couldn't do it for more than a few minutes. But now I can stand and get around for almost 30 minutes before I have to. Damn, he's doing a lot better than I thought. Also, that dog is going straight to Papa Squat. You know, it hasn't been out there in quite a while. The rest. So I feel good about that because that means I'm making progress. But I still have to be really careful not to push myself too much at once. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, come on. Also, I don't think that was 30 minutes by any means, but I'm happy that he's doing something. But me and Jessica are also changing our diets to Dr. Now's. And I'm working really hard to lose weight. I just hope that I make enough progress by my next appointment. Because with everything that's happened this past month, I know I have to get help now more than ever. We're even working. That don't look that bad as far as like low carb goes. So hopefully he'll kill it. He'll do great. He'll go in there. He lost 150 pounds. I'm moving to Houston next month, like Dr. Now said. Jess is still a little on the fence about it, but it makes sense to me. Because if I lose Dr. Now's help, then I'll lose everything. Uh, I, I don't know. Do you think, I don't think a lot of people want to move, but also you're asking her to quit her job and go there. For you, it's a lot easier just to move there, but for her... It's a whole different life. I told you we were going to be 600 pounds screwed if we got a flat tire or anything. That, I don't, I, I kind of saw it coming with the way he was getting in and out of that van. Julius called me to tell me that he was stranded a couple of hours away. And at his size, being on the side of the road in Texas heat with no air conditioning wasn't going to turn out well. He wouldn't have lasted long like that. So I sent a transport to pick him up and bring him here to the hospital so we can make sure... Do you think you can door dash to a broke down car? Because I bet you friggin' could. Sure, he's doing okay and hasn't done anything to push his body too hard. But the traveling is also irritating his severe lymphedema. And if that area gets infected, it could lead to sepsis very quickly. And with how advanced it is now, it's only a matter of time before the lymphedema becomes a serious and life-threatening issue, if it hasn't already. I'm kind of surprised that 900 pounds, it isn't uh, more infected, more serious than that. Like, it's bad, don't get me wrong. 
but I'm surprised it hasn't hospitalized him before this point. Having any pain right now? Yeah, the whole problem from my hips and my back down is just... Well, this mass is very heavy and putting a lot of strain in your back and on your knee and head. Yeah. The fact that he's as mobile as he is, I, I keep saying it, but it just blows my friggin' mind that he can get around at all. All right, there's no sign of infection, which is good, but it's really swollen and irritated. So to be safe and make sure, we're gonna get some blood tests on you and we're gonna see how the kidney function is doing. But you know, when you have a lack of anemia like this, when he touches that thing, it kind of reminds me of what the like doctor I had when I was a kid with the coldest, like most cracked hands ever. It was miserable. This is like a deep portion of the ground. All the water goes there. The two things important with this, one is to lose weight. The other one is that we need to remove the surgery. Even remove it, it may come back. But if you're in lower weight, then we can deal with it. Um, you would think, like, his weight loss, he would want to kick into high gear just to get rid of that thing, because it has to suck walking around with that. But when you're 900 or even three or 400 pounds, it's going to be very hard to deal with this. So we need to um, aggressively work with your weight, think of removing this mass. Yeah. But there's a good chance you wouldn't survive another few months if we let you continue like you have been. So after we... That's a reality check I think you need to hear. Like, each one of us get this big and we think everything like, oh, it's all good until something punches you in the face and you're like, okay, it's serious. Like, I'm not going to be around much longer unless this changes. On our test, if there's nothing we need to address immediately, we may start you on a controlled diet here to help you with that. Since you don't look to have lost much weight, 20 to 30 pounds at best. So, yes, it's... Damn, we're going into the calorie cell block. I, it's actually a good thing when they put him on the controlled diet, but he don't exactly look happy. He's definitely frowning that he didn't get to stop and get some fast food on the way. The situation is very serious right now, because if your lymphedema gets infected, it's going to be very hard to treat it with antibody, and it can get in bloodstream. And at that point, you likely won't survive, okay? So this is a dangerous situation to have, and you need to be very proactive to take care of it right now. Okay. I love Doctor Now, man. That guy tries so hard to help people. You just have to be willing to help yourself, and I feel like he'll do it for you. He'll get you wherever you need to go. This whole thing just keeps getting scarier and scarier. But at least I made it, and I'm getting the help I need. For a moment, I know me and Jessica were both real worried when the car broke down, because I don't think I would have lasted long if Doctor Now didn't send the ambulance for me. Damn right, but them turkey buzzers would ate good for quite a while. I still had to wait on the side of the road for two hours for it to get there, and that alone was almost too much. So I'm really happy to have that all over with, but my anxiety is still really high because I'm scared about the tests and all the stuff that Dr. Now said. I, I was scared to death of the test too, and every time they came back and said they were fine, I said, you must have mixed this shit up with somebody else. That can't be me. Like, I'm at death's door. I think I did lose more than 20 or 30 pounds the past two months. But regardless, I'm here. I'm ready to work hard and do what I need to make sure I don't end up to where my body finally gets to a breaking point and my weight finally kills me. Does he look like he lost? I Man, I really can't tell with this guy because that lymphedema is throwing me so off with him. And I know with each day that passes, I have even less time. So I have to do this now before it's too late. Urgency is definitely needed with this one. I mean, once once you're that big, I feel like if you don't understand the level of urgency, you're effing up, man, because your life is like hanging by like on a thread. Like you're doing the tight, like tight roping towards a thousand and you're about to fall. It's going to be bad. I've been here in the hospital in Houston for a couple of days and things aren't going well at all, not even remotely. Me and Jessica were trying to find a place to live here in Houston. But Jessica was still hesitant, so we decided to push the move to once I got approved for weight loss surgery. But Dr. Now doesn't think it's a good idea for me to make that trip again, because he says my lymphedema has a small infection. And traveling like... But do you really blame her for not wanting to move there? Because you probably sold her the dream this whole time about how you're going to do this, you're going to do that. 
and you've done a whole hell lot of nothing. So I can't blame her at all for not wanting to move there with you. Like that is getting too risky. So I have to stay down here, which is the first unexpected thing. But earlier today, Jessica told me she doesn't want to stay down here with me right now and that she wants to go back to Oklahoma, which I guess basically means we're breaking up. As long as you got food, you should be happy. That's what you said earlier. But uh-oh, now he doesn't have food and now he doesn't have a girlfriend? I bet he's going to be hell on wheels to deal with. I don't know. So just when I thought things couldn't go off the tracks even more, that was another thing that blindsided me. And then to top it all off, the food here is horrible. And I'm not allowed any... What did you expect, buddy? We're trying to diet. It doesn't exactly taste the best, but it's going to save your damn life. Just eat it and shut up. Compromises. I don't have anything to calm me down or help me deal with all of this. And with nothing to help me deal, my stress level and anxiety just keep getting worse. I'm really, really struggling. I'll buy you a stress ball you can squeeze or something. I have no problem doing that. I'll even do it at the hospital gift store. I did it with that once. It was like ten friggin' dollars for this little stupid ball. How you doing? Okay, I'm just sitting here. I don't think she thought you'd be doing anything different than that, but I, I get what you're saying. Just been getting antibiotics. I'm gonna go home since there's not really a set plan right now. You even know what that is? Hopefully tonight, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you have to go home because Bella's there and. I hope she's okay. Yeah, the dog. That's why she wants to go home. It's got nothing to do with getting away with your miserable ass that yelled at her for going up to a hotel room and not moving fast enough at first. She's okay. <laughs> Are you even planning on coming back? I don't know exactly yet. You want me to come back? I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean... It's like a little kid throwing a temper tantrum right now. She's crying when instead of that, she should just be trying to get even. I love me some get even and some petty. He's got a couple brothers or something. She could definitely get even. I don't know right now. I mean, I need you around still, yeah? I don't know. It's not that I don't want you to come back, but just We just sit here and constantly fight. That's Oh, suck a Twinkie Nutzilla. This is not even cool. This lady does everything for you, and now you're going to turn it on her somehow? I hate when guys do this. What you want to do for the next year? No. I feel like he just needs me around just to help him, not to be, like, in a relationship. He gets mad whenever I cry or um, want to talk about things because he doesn't want to talk about them. It makes me... What the guy gets mad when somebody cries? Like, I, obviously you want to avoid the crying altogether, but you don't get mad about it. This guy's a miserable sack of shit. I feel like I have to bottle everything up. I love JT a lot, and that's what makes it hard. How you feel about me leaving? Stressed. Uh, I mean, like, I told you, this ain't gonna be easy. This is gonna be literally a torture. And I'm not, I'm definitely not going to be easy to cope with during it. Oh my god. So you lose food so you get to take it out on everyone else? That's not exactly how this is supposed to work. Well, it comes off to me as you don't care and that's, Just, it hurts. But, well, I'm sorry. But you knew this when you got into it. I literally told you on day one. Plans change, I guess. You told her that if she didn't bring you candy, you were going to turn into like a cursed friggin... Oh my god, dude. I can't stand this guy. I just want to stay in Oklahoma. Uh, I can't even believe this. Because it's just one thing after another. When you get frustrated and mad, you just bolt. It's like, you want to talk about a relationship? If it's not going to work, then what's the point? 
don't even think she's really bolting. I think she's kind of just like, all right, you're pushing me away, so I'm going to be pushed away. Then just go. Damn, you just made yourself single for everybody. I can't believe all of this is happening. In a matter of a few days, I pretty much lost my home, my car, and my girlfriend. And my dog. What car? Wasn't it a rental? We rented the damn van. Where We had a car? For now, because I can't go back and get Bella. It's like my whole life is falling apart right when I'm trying to save it. And all I want to do right now is eat. But I can't even do that. So none of this is fair at all. Not in any way. Wah, well, me big baby. Sad can't eat. Chase away girlfriend. What about dog? Really? That's your thought process? I've been in Houston for a month now. Just living at the hospital. So my life still is kind of in the toilet right now. I feel like I'm going out of my mind here. And the terrible food here doesn't help. But Doc tells me. Oh my God, dude, we're still so fixated on the damn food. We're on a diet. Who cares if it sucks? You're in the freaking hospital already at 900 pounds. I'm getting a change of scenery for today because I'm going to a rehab center that doesn't sound like as bad as it is here. But doctor now says I need someone down here to help me. So my cousin Blair came down to visit me a couple of days ago. This guy must have a whole hell of a lot of free time to come deal with your miserable ass. I was told by Dr. Now that I'm getting transferred to a rehabilitation center. Yeah. Uh, probably just try to look for apartments while I'm there. I'm just gonna find a way to get my stuff down here. That's probably best case scenario for him, because nobody can probably stay there long term to help him. He chased away his girlfriend. It totally makes sense. The day after he first arrived here at the hospital, we checked his weight and he was only down to 884 pounds. So in Holy shit, that's all we lost? 20 or 30 was generous then, if that's what he was saying. Two months on his own, he only lost eight pounds. But in Oh my god. We took some effing X lax. That's a big dump. After all he was eating, I imagine he could get eight pounds out of there in one shot. In the month we had him here, on a 1200 calorie a day controlled diet, we have gotten him to lose 126 pounds to get him down to 758. And his lymphedema has improved some. He lost that in one month? And he lost eight in two at home? That's friggin' crazy. Because it's getting smaller, so now what we can do is send him to rehab, which will help him get his stamina, but won't have the same controlled diet. So we can start to see how he's gonna do on his own. I guess it's sink or swim time, so Dr. Now's gotta let him out into the world at some point. The baby's gotta start walking. I've been here in Houston in this rehab facility for another month, and it's been almost as miserable as the first month in the hospital. The only good thing has been, there's just a little bit more freedom here. Oh no. Where is this heading? You give this guy some kind of freedom, what's he doing? But it's been really lonely. My cousin had to go back a few days after I got here. And I haven't heard much from Jessica. Not that I want to. So I've just been- That's cause Blair and Jessica are playing hide the weenie. Focusing on trying to make the progress Dr. Now wants, so I can get out of here soon. But so far, that hasn't happened. Yep. Thank you. This past one, Julius hasn't done as well in rehab as I'd hoped. His biggest problem is still his attitude. He doesn't like the food or having to do the rehab exercises he needs. So. I could have told you that. Nobody likes the food exactly. When you start a diet, it's obviously not going to be the same thing your taste buds are used to. It's going to be a hell of a lot less satisfying at first, but eventually you kind of adjust and sugar don't taste as good. He hasn't been complying with physical therapy a lot of days. And he has also been ordering food for delivery and not sticking to the diet. 
So it's showing us it's going to be a bad situation if he is on his own right now. Oh, man, he got one of those fat zip line things. I never got to play with one of those. But ordering Domino's to a rehab is friggin' crazy, and I'm sure that's what he was ordering. Because I can't afford to undo the progress we have made with him so far. Has he really made that much progress, though? Hey, JT. Hello. How are you today? Doing okay. So, how are you getting along? Uh, okay, I guess, but I feel like I'll be better when I'm out. Yeah, you've been here for two months, and uh, it doesn't seem like you have lost any weight. No, I haven't. What? He seems almost, like, smug and happy about it. Like, I'm going to rebel against your program because I'm not happy that I can't do this or can't do that. You get some kind of freedom, but at some point... If you're going to hurt yourself with that freedom, he's just going to put you back in the hospital. You're going back on calorie lockdown. What's the point of coming down here and not doing diet? Um, guess I'm not sure. Let's check your weight and see. Okay. Hey, I just realized he finally got new clothes from somewhere. Wait till zero. Okay. Oh my god, they set up the scale right outside his room. That's convenient. They're trying to be nice to you. Hang it on. Seven forty eight, huh? Well, actually I did lose weight. And I haven't gained any weight since I've been here. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Somebody give him a cookie, a protein cookie. Ten pounds? And he's proud of that. What the hell, dude? You know, when you're 700 pounds, if you stick with the 1200 calorie diet, how much you're going to lose a month? Uh, I have no idea. 100 pounds. Yeah, I did that last month, like you said. You should have done it again. That's just according to you. What do you mean? Doctor Now, you give him the old one, too. I don't know how Doctor Now doesn't get more pissed off at people when they act like this towards him. What are you t trying to tell me? Uh, my mental state, me not being in a mental state, me being stressed out, can makes me eat, makes me want to eat. That's me being here. I'm assuming that if I would have went back home, I'd have been losing that weight and we'd be having... Oh, yeah, buddy, you would have and killed it. We saw how well that went the first time. He just wants to get back around Jessica. I think he's going to throw a temper tantrum until he can go back. Surgery and a completely different conversation than this. You know, make any sense. No matter you in Houston or Oklahoma or Timbuktu, mm -hmm. nothing justified to be unhealthy and give me all that rhetoric that I didn't follow that because I wasn't planning to be in here. Okay. Really, I mean, this is your life. This is your health. Okay. And you are. Nobody's going to help you at the end of the day if this is the type of energy you carry into every friggin' transaction. We're responsible for it, and we've given you help and tools to change your life and be healthy, and you're making all kind of nonsense a reason not to follow the eyes, right? Make sense? Sure. It does? Yes. To you? Yes. Okay. There's no hope for you. Damn, I've never heard Dr. Now say something like that. Usually he's so positive, like keep hope alive. Usually I try to be positive, but I'm having a hard one with this guy. You're gonna kill yourself young. Okay. Okay? Noted. You gain the weight back and become immobile, then your health is gonna go down the tube and you're not gonna survive. Mm -hmm. To be fair, he hasn't done anything on his own yet at all. Only thing that worked out for him was the controlled diet with you. You're killing yourself with the food. Which part of that is so hard to understand? No matter where you are, you are responsible for your eating habit. You are responsible to improve your life and your health. Don't make... Sometimes responsibility is a tough one to really hang on to, though, because you almost feel like you could blame other stuff. Like, I know he had a bad childhood and all that, but he definitely is deflecting and, like, not owning up to any kind of accountability here.
Those excuses that are acceptable to you do not follow the diet because the floor was crooked, the light was not good, the bed was not good, I was not playing me here, so I'm going to kill myself with food. Okay. If the floor was crooked, we would have done took a freaking tummy dive, like belly flopped right into that thing by now. Okay? Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. You understand all that? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go back to your room. That's it for friggin' JT. Let's just send him back to Oklahoma. That's clearly what he wants. You think you got enough stamina and enough willing that you're gonna be able to make those changes? Yes. Okay, if you're telling me the truth and you stick with the diet, like we discussed, you should be able to lose one month, easily 100 pounds. But the goal I'm giving you is just to lose 80 pounds in the next month, okay? I think that's probably pretty fair, considering he's up by 800. He could drop 80, no problem. It'll literally melt off you at first, if he listens to Doctor now. Okay. All right, if you're not able to lose that, then that means you're not sick of me to die. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right, I'll see you later, okay? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> If this guy's not going to put forth any effort, why would anyone else want to help you if you're not going to cheer for yourself? you got to be your own biggest cheerleader and not just be so negative. I know that's hard to do at this point, but he's going to have to friggin' change it up a little bit, man. He's going to have to be a little more positive. I guess I'm still not getting out of here anytime soon. None of this is going like I thought it would. And the harder I try, the worse things get. How hard did you really try, though? You're ordering delivery to the rehab. So, there's not a whole lot of effort going forth here. After Dr. Now came by last week, I was still struggling a lot. But I called my cousin Blair to kind of vent about things and how hard it all is. And he told me he'd come back down to be with me and encourage me. Damn, Blair must have some kind of superpowers if he can snap you out of that, because you don't listen to friggin' anyone else. So he's been back in Houston with me for the past week. And so that's helped me a lot. But right now, my focus is on doing what I have to to get out of here. And that means I need to hit the goal Dr. Now gave me. So I'm working really hard to lose weight. Thank you. So you're gonna tell me that he was just lonely after he chased off Jessica. That makes no sense at all. And that bod body spray is not going to cover up 800 pounds of steak. Bon appetit. Thanks. I'm only eating the food they give me here, even though it's awful. Do you want my beans? Are you try them? No, I don't know if I'm allowed to have them. That food doesn't look that bad as far as hospital food goes either. So you want mine? No. Blair's made some progress finding a housing option for me. He found a halfway house for men doing rehab and going through medical procedures that I might qualify for. So if that works out, I can stay there for the next year. I feel like JT is losing weight. I'm proud of him for getting his life together. I think the hardest part is finding an apartment. And I'd be proud of him too if he just changed his mindset a little bit because he's pushing back on everything anyone tells him when they're literally just trying to help him. I just want to help me stress less. For the first time since I got back to Houston, I feel like I have some hope and I feel motivated again. I just need to keep at it because I know I have a long way to go. So it's more important than ever for me to work as hard as I can. So I don't mess this up and lose the chance I still have the life I want. Okay, so he was just struggling to get in the right mindset. That happens a lot. It's kind of hard, man. When you're used to just doing whatever the hell you want, it takes a forever to like kind of lock in, and it took me time too, so maybe he's not as bad as I think this whole time. For the first time in the last three months, I'm really excited because I'm finally getting to leave the rehab facility. When they moved me to a bigger room, I started to think the plan was for me to be here forever. But yesterday... Do you guys think he's still sticking with it, or the second he gets out of here, it's just junk food jailbreak, like right off the bat? I hit Dr. Now's weight loss goal he gave me a month ago. So he's finally discharging me, and I really can't wait to get out of here. My cousin Blair had to go back home about a week and a half ago, but he was down here for almost a month and really helped me out. 
I don't think I could have done this without him. And I wouldn't have a place to go now if it weren't for him. Because Oh, we lost Hubby too. That kind of sucks. Yeah, everything worked out and I was approved to move into the halfway house. And so that's where I'm headed. But I'm not quite sure what to expect. So I'm a little nervous about that. Because it's just gonna be Can I have an update on Jessica? I need to know what's going on there. Have we talked to her or anything? Valentine's Day's coming up. Do you have a Valentine? Be somewhere new. And there's also gonna be people I'm living with. But mostly I'm just excited to be getting out of here. And that I have a place to live for now. But didn't they say it was like people with like rehab and addiction issues or something like that? Because those halfway houses can be treacherous from what I've heard. Or people have told me at least. Like a lot of bad stuff goes on there. So I give it him a goal to lose another 75 pounds over the next two months. But now he just has to do it completely on his own. Hopefully he's going to stay on track. But that's all up to him now. It was never up to anybody but him this whole time anyway. I've been out of rehab and living in my shared home for about a month now. And I've had my ups and downs. Damn, that chair's kind of out of the question, huh? He might be able to get that lymphedema thing on there or whatever, but that's a friggin' narrow chair. That's not made for 600, 700 pounders or anything. There are a lot of things I'm still trying to get used to and manage. Mainly because I don't have a car or any way to get anywhere. So I mostly just stay here all day and watch TV. And I'm alone most of the time. That was the biggest thing I thought was going to be different here, because it's a group home where I'm living with others. Oh, he's just lonely. He wants to make friends. You shouldn't have chased off Jessica then. That's still pissing me off. But most of the people who live with me here are gone during the day. So loneliness has still been a struggle for me like it was in the medical facility. But it's been nice having some of my freedom back with my meals. I'm uh -oh. sticking to Dr. Now's diet, but I'm being... Oh, good, man. I thought for sure that was going to be like some friggin' five guys or something. Being honest, it's a little harder than I thought it was going to be. But I haven't lost my focus, and I'm confident I'm losing the weight still like I need. I'm not giving it. That's good, man. I like to hear that. People don't realize that once you're on, like, I, get, I think he didn't realize at least. That on that controlled diet and in the hospital, it was a whole hell of a lot easier than being out in the wild, making your own meals or getting your own meals. Into my cravings and I'm resisting temptation because getting weight loss surgery is the whole reason why I'm down here and sacrificed most of my life, even if it was all unexpectedly. So I'm making sure that all wasn't for nothing and that I'm moving towards the life I want. And that's only going to happen if I hit my goal at my next appointment. So that's what I intend to do. Where did this guy come from, and when the hell did he get so driven all of a sudden? It's great to see, but I just didn't expect it from what I saw early on. I'm at Dr. Now's about to find out if I lost the weight I need to hit my goal. Two months ago, I was down to 671, and I needed to lose 75 pounds by today. So if I did, I'll be under 596. Okay, not exactly what he asked for. Not bad by any means. He's still doing friggin' pretty good for being out in the wild and on his own for the first time, really. That's a little disappointing. I'm happy I'm losing, but I worked really hard, so I expected that number to be lower. It's a lot I'm a of little weight, though. upset that it's not. And I'm also worried about what Dr. Now's gonna tell me, because I didn't lose enough. I think Dr. Now is still going to approve him, honestly. And I'm scared about what's going to happen now. So today you're down to 619. Almost getting into the 500s, huh? Yes, sir. But not quite there yet. Overall, you're down just over 270 pounds. Yes. Seems so defeated already. He did good. I just think he was expecting to lose a lot more because of how, what he was losing in the hospital when they were bringing him everything. But once you get out there and you're not good at tracking it on your own, it's a lot tougher to figure out. So, can you tell any difference? A little bit, yeah. Move around bit. a lot more. Okay. So, here's the deal. You didn't hit your goal. I know. But you showed me now for me to see that you're trying to do what you need and making some effort. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and prove for weight loss surgery. Okay, great. That's good. I didn't know if he was or not. I thought he would though. Like it, he seems to give you a little bit of leeway if you're doing the right thing and trying a lot harder than you initially were. Thanks. But the catch is that I'm gonna schedule it for two months from now. And that time, I want you to lose another 40 pounds. Okay? All right. You think you can do that? Yes, sir. Okay. 40 pounds in two months? That's a cakewalk for this guy. Well, not literally a cakewalk, but it should be pretty easy for him considering everything that he's already been through and done and all that. Um, he should be able to lose at least 40 pounds and then at least 25 pounds each month after that. JT's gold weight uh, will be around 220 pounds. So as far as... Okay, that don't sound that bad. He's a little taller. My goal's still 250. Still got 27 pounds to go. But I am under what the surgeon told me to get to to get skin removal and all that. So, I, so I'm probably like right next to my goal at this point. Because he's been able to come, he still has a lot of progress he needs to make. And hard work ahead of him to do that. But if he doesn't continue to do what he needs, he could very easily start to gain again and end up back where he started at 900 pounds and facing an early death. So he. I mean, the work doesn't stop. The thing I see with people is when they start to get like complacent and kind of satisfied and kind of just rest, they'll start to gain back a little bit of weight typically. At least a lot of you have told me that you had the surgery and gained back weight just because you got happy and content and then you just stopped trying. He needs to make sure all his progress doesn't end up just being temporary because he gains all his weight back. So he's not out of the woods yet and he needs to make sure he stays motivated and keeps pushing himself to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to stay out of the woods. No uh, little red robin or anything like that. So yeah, hopefully he keeps working in the right direction. With all my weight loss and progress, I've been able to build my stamina up to walk a whole lot further than I've been able to go for more than 10 years. Damn, this guy, he don't even look like the same person from the start. I mean, he does because he's got that boulder thing hanging, obviously. But he's got to feel so much better, so much happier about himself. Because he kind of was a miserable sack of shit for quite a while. So I've been trying to take walks outside for my daily exercise. And a couple of weeks ago, I was able to go far enough to discover a nearby park. It's small, but it's nice. And without a car, it's at least a place I can go to feel like I'm enjoying the outdoors. We're going to have to get him some new shoes, though, because those shoes really are cranking the soldier boy. Like, they're leaning like hell. It sounds crazy, but when you're almost 900 pounds, you forget what the sun and wind feel like on your skin because you either never go outside anymore or you do and you're sweating so much it's all you can feel oh yeah i believe it i mean i would avoid going outside like the plague but 600 pound vampire confirmed so i'm savoring being able to do something like this now as simple as it is it's a big deal to me because it shows me how far i've been able to come in the last year i had my two-month post-surgery follow with dr now a few days ago and I'm just barely in the 400s at 491. And I've just barely lost over 400 pounds. Damn, isn't that crazy to say he's 491, but he's already lost over 400 pounds? I wish I got fatter so my number could be crazy like that. I can hardly believe I've been able to do that. And for the ways I can see my life starting to get better. And if I can stay on track, it's just going to keep on getting better. Because doctor now said if I do, I'll be ready for my lymphedema removal in a couple of months. And that can take up to another 100 pounds off me. So that's going to be life changing for me. A hundred? Could you imagine having a 10 year old hanging from your leg at all times while you're walking? That has to be miserable, dude. Not to just drop more weight, but because this thing has been pulling on me and keeping me from getting around for more than a third of my life. So I'm extremely motivated to make sure I hit that goal and get that in the next couple of months. And if I do, it'll also mean I'll be in the lower 300s very soon. So I feel like all the hard work and all the sacrifice this took is paying off. Yeah, we sacrificed our girlfriend and everything. So at this point, you better make it pay off. I, I still want to know what the hell is going on with her. That was the interesting storyline from this one. 
A year ago, I couldn't even see a future for myself. I wasn't gonna survive long enough to have one, but now I do. And I'm getting close enough to that future and that life I want to where I can see it. And I can believe I'm gonna make it. So I'm more motivated than ever to push myself to get there and start a life I gave up on. You're not really planning for the future. You're kind of going day by day. So I get what he's saying with that. So I'm not slowing down or getting off track because I can see the life I want on the horizon. I'll be there soon and I can't wait for that. Well, that's good, man. JT turned it all around. It went from the miserable person he was at the start, kind of snapping at everybody to actually working in a positive direction. I like to see it. Even if you start out rough, if you end strong, that's fine. A lot of people have ups and downs. You're gonna fall down a million times in life. But eventually, you just have to stand up that last time and then you're not gonna fall down anymore and you'll keep going. And hopefully this guy kept going. I'll have to look in to see where he's at at this point. But that's JT for you and we don't know what the hell happened to Jessica. I wish I did. Wait, Justin Timberlake is married to Jessica Biel, right? That's crazy. It was JT and Jessica again or something like that. But I'll see you guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, I'm out of here. Peace.